Hi guys, welcome back to another video for Selenium automation testing with .NET Core course that we have been talking all these days. So, you know, last video we actually tried to check in our code in GitHub and now it is available in the GitHub and it's all working fine without any problem. But in this video, we are going to extend the custom control code that we wrote in our early videos. So we wrote a method called uh, custom control dot combo box, which is a static method, which tried to serve a operation for selecting the combo box on that UI uh, on the UI that we have. But now we are going to see how we can actually extend it to perform actions such as click and also for send keys. And there are some drop downs which we have not even saw on the page. Basically, this combo box that you see in here is like a custom control combo box, but there are some drop downs which uses the select uh, tags so you can also use the select uh, method which is available in the selenium which is useful for performing a uh, drop down selection operation using its value or its index or its text something like that so you can use that as well so we are going to start writing some methods in here like a custom control methods in selenium and we'll see how we can actually uh, extend that in further videos using the extension methods but but yeah so this is this is basically it for writing a custom control in Selenium. But while we complete our page object model video in our next uh, lectures, probably we'll then extend the custom controls even more using extension methods of C-sharp. But at this point, I guess this is a starting point of Selenium's custom control extensions and all those stuffs that we can write over here, and then we can move further from there, right? So, well, let's get started then. So what I'm going to do is right um, now you can see that our code is currently sitting on the GitHub, which is pretty good. So it is also showing over there. And that's the reason, as I told you, that if you have a code checked into the GitHub, it is very, very good. So now uh, we can keep checking in the code every time we complete this lecture. So you will have the updated code. You can also see my check-in history once you see this particular video. So uh, I'm actually going to go over here for our um, for a unit test one.cs file. And you can see that currently what we're doing is like every time in order to perform a send keys, uh, we are doing a send keys, we're calling a send keys method. But for the send keys method, we also have a locators being passed like ID. And for this case, we have like an X path being passed. And if you're using a CSS selector, then we'll be passing a CSS selector or something like that. Uh, and if there is an uh, attribute, then we can use the attribute as well. So we, can, we will use different combinations of locator strategy in Selenium to perform that action. But what if it is a good choice that we write them as a method so that we can try to access that uh, or maybe call them using that method and it is very, very straightforward and simple to, to actually uh, use those method instead of writing like a verbose code over here. So this is very, very complex basically. So what we can do is we can actually try writing a more uh, more simplistic or maybe a robust fashion of coding, uh, which can simplify our coding practices a lot. So uh, what I really mean in here is uh, we can actually uh, place this code or the identifier that you can see over here into um, into a identifiers variable. And from there, we can just pass identifier variable on that method so that it can perform the action that we are uh, actually looking for. That's a very, very easiest way of actually handling or performing the action uh, on the Selenium C sharp. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's say if I want to do an send keys. So for the send keys operation, all we require is uh, we need to know the, uh, the locator. And you can see that this send keys actually is a part of the interface iWeb element. So if you see the send keys, if we click that, you can see that this is actually coming from the iWeb element interface. So this iWeb element interface is what is responsible for you to perform an action. So uh, it has the send keys, it has the get CSS property, it has click, clear, um, size, location, enable, text, tag name, and all those things. So everything is sitting under the iWeb element for us. So what I can do is I can probably grab this whole thing or, or maybe this whole uh, line and we can start dissecting it into smaller method so that it can perform a sort of operation for us. So if I go to the custom control here, let's say if I want to do a send keys operation, so I can just write something like a public static, oops, 
void maybe enter text so this is like our custom control that we have uh, and over here I'm just gonna pass the identifier which is gonna be uh, the identifier that we have been passing all these uh, time so you can also pass the i web element uh, like that of the web element and then uh, you can pass the uh, string of the value like how we did for the combo control over there and then all we're going to do is with the web element we are going to do a send keys of the value that we are passing in that's it so this way it's going to perform a enter key enter text operation and similarly for the click operation what i can do is i can just copy paste the whole code pretty much like how we did in here and then we can call the click operation and then you can just call the click method but you don't really require a value for that because all you're going to do is you're going to perform a click on that particular web element and then you can ask me what is the point we're basically calling a click operation of the web element and you're going to do exactly the same thing over here what difference does it really makes for example let's say if you want to wait for a control to appear and then perform a click operation you can perform a wait first uh, like a I'm not going to use thread dot sleep probably uh, implicit weight or explicit weight of selenium again we'll talk about the weight mechanism in detail uh, in upcoming videos or probably those things are already available in my uh, YouTube channels I can share you that link on this um, on this video as a description you can discuss from I mean you can look at from there but but yeah you can perform a weight and then you can perform a click operation those things are pretty good on the custom controls and similarly there are even more advantage of having a custom control for example as you can see in here for the combo box we wrapped all the complexities of the combo box as a very very smaller fashion like one method and but it is actually doing a click operation it's going to perform a send keys operation and it's also going to perform a click on that particular uh, particular option which has been listed on that combo box so all these things it's been doing so these are some of the best thing that you can grab from the custom control so click is like a straightforward mechanism but but if you perform a send keys if you want to do a clear text and then a send keys you can use this as well there are even more better ways of doing this like you can do a fluent way of writing the code like you can chain the operation like uh returning the custom controls class as a return type of the enter text and then you can perform it but we're not going to discuss that in this this video don't worry about it uh, so as I told you this is the thing about the uh, enter text and the click so uh, let this be for now let's stick with what we have at the moment and the, another way of using with C sharp uh, latest feature is you can use the expression bodied member uh, as well so if you just press control dot you can see that it tells you that use expression body for the method so this is a new thing in c sharp if you use this it just uses a lambda expression as you can see in here so this is a very neat uh, way of doing it if your code is just like a one liner probably you can just use something like this this is pretty straightforward similarly over here just put control dot and use this expression body remember you can see that it looks like just single line but it does the exact same thing that using the bodied member that you can use yeah so now we have this uh enter key in place and click operation uh in place so how do we really work with that so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh cut this code so instead of send keys like that what i can do is like i can just call the custom control dot you can see that the enter text method is coming for us which is pretty good and we can pass this driver dot find uh, element of this and then we can pass the value as um, as mango something like that and similarly if I want to perform uh, a click operation then I can just select the whole thing like that uh, and this is gonna be a click so basically uh, custom control dot uh, click and I can just pass no, I'm sorry pass the control that I'm looking for that's it so this way it's going to perform a click operation for me and so you can see that now everything is coming from the custom control for us rather actually coming directly from the selenium's own 
uh, control so this is another power of having a custom controls and most of the companies like in uh, in many companies they use the custom controls mechanism they have they will have a custom control because there will be cases that um, they will have they will develop an UI component as a component and for those component you need to actually write a custom control to perform as uh, perform operation on the UI so those in those cases these custom controls are uh, very very useful again this is like a very very super simple custom control I don't even think that any company will be close to, to what we have written uh, like this like it's pretty uh, simple but even there are high chances that these codes will codes will fail because there are so many flaws in this code that we have written because we're just beginning I have not put a lot of thoughts on that but while we extend in the extension methods you will see that there are more things that you can do and there are even more advanced things that i have discussed in my advanced series where you can go ahead and see how we have extended that for the framework level but for now this is this is what it is yeah so so this is the custom control and then i was talking about the select drop down right if you remember so if you go to uh to any one of the uh if you go to this particular page you can see that we have this ajax drop down and if i just right click and inspect the element you can see that it actually has a select tag and this select tag actually has uh, a value of 183 but it has um, it has an op the text like celery uh, cauliflower or lettuce something like that so in order for us to select these kinds of value from a drop down like from the select uh, tag all you're going to do is you can actually use a select operation or maybe it's like drop down operation something like that so you can do something like public static void uh, select uh, by value something like this you can do this as well so i web element of the web element where i'm actually going to do so in this case we cannot use this expression bodied members because we need to call a class called as select uh, and you can see that the select class will not come at this point of time uh, because we actually need to install a new package so now comes a new package altogether which is going to be selenium dot support package so we're going to install a new package called as selenium dot support this one which has some of the uh, some of the feature which we don't really have with the uh, selenium dot web driver so selenium dot support has the the uh, page object model options uh, and the select operations uh, and even the page object model option is now been removed to dot net selenium extras um, i guess so it's all been gone right now but this one is definitely something we really require for for us to perform an action the select operation that i was talking about so it's been installed right now and if i just go to the unit test one dot cs uh, uh, over here and now if i hit control dot i guess it's a select element not select <clears throat> so if i hit control dot you can see that it comes from using open selenium dot support dot ui so this is the one which i was talking about so you need to select this uh, element like select element uh, over here and then uh, you need to pass the with the web element that we're going to select which is something but the web element that we are passing in and then you can perform an action something like select uh, of like select by text or select by value or index something like that so because we're selecting this by text i guess or oh, no so it's value so we're going to do a value and now we need to pass the value here so string of the value that we are going to be selecting so you can just select that value something like this so this way it selects by a value on that particular drop down so if you want to select this by a text that and you can use this select uh, by uh, text something like that uh, and this is going to be the text and i can just put this select by text and i can change this to text as well so you can see that all i'm trying to do is i'm going to select this by value select by text something like that i have written two methods right now which means now i can select the drop downs from there so let's say if i want to just um, comment these two lines of code and i want to do a custom control dot select by text where i'm gonna select 
using the identifier you can see that this right actually has an id of content uh, placeholder one of uh, add one something like that so i can just pass that uh, identifier which is nothing but the driver uh, dot find element by dot you know what we need to pass the identifier which is something but the id uh, and uh, i'm gonna pass this id and i need to pass the text which is nothing but i guess i want to select the cauliflower probably so i can just pass the cauliflower in here and i would like to see if it's it's selecting the cauliflower from there so let's try to execute this and see how our custom controls for uh, these kinds kinds of code actually work so if i just right click and do a debug uh, so we'll see how it actually works there you go so you can see that by default it has selected the celery so we need that to select cauliflower and you can see that the cauliflower has been selected which is pretty cool so this is the way that you can select the drop down so you can see that we have actually automated uh, for the click operation for the enter text operation and for the select uh, text operation for the combo box which is the custom combo box and all those things uh, in this uh, course so far and we also saw how we can write the custom controls in here but we have not really used a lot of industrial practice while writing the custom controls so far we are going to talk about that after the page object model code that we'll be talking in our next video and then we'll see how we can extend that catch you in our next video